Hey guys, what is up? My name is Joshua and welcome to another YMOD tutorial video. Now, I'm sorry if this one's a bit more basic than the other ones, but uh, believe me, I'm getting to something over here, so... Let's just start this video off. So, what I've bring to you today is automatic doors, like this, with YMOD. Now, this door here is actually a mod, okay? I will, or an add-on, I will just disclaim that, but this can work with anything you want to trigger when someone gets near something. So that's the whole idea of this, it's a proximity detector. So, let's just jump right into the explanation to how this works. Now, this door here is, a, oops, is actually an add-on called, uh, well, doors, which is somewhere over here. But, uh, and it comes with this little uh, chip, this little gate here, and as you can see, the options for the gate are open and close. Now, since there's an open and a close, that means I had to have two of these gates, but this will all be explained. So. The way this works is I have a beacon sensor up the top here, and this beacon sensor can detect distance, but it doesn't know what to detect, so I need to hook it up to a target finder. So the target finder is currently detecting me, as you can see, and I rig the target finder up to the beacon sensor. The beacon sensor detects my distance. Uh, this screen here is not necessary, it's just here to show the distance so it's easier for you to judge. And then we've got a uh, less than gate, so we basically make it so if my distance relative to the beacon sensor is less than, I've just made it 120, I think? Yep. So if my distance is less than 120, it will then fire off an action. So let's just get right on to building this over here. Now, oh, by the way, so I've got two of these here. I've got a greater than and less than. You really only need a less than gate uh, normally. I'll show you why. So let's just get right on to how this works. So. Uh, let's just gather all the things we need first. So we're going to need a beacon sensor, and you want this beacon sensor as close to the actual thing that you're detecting distance from, because obviously this thing here detects a distance. So if I place it over here, and I want to go near this, uh, it's going to be very difficult because obviously I'm over here. So what you do is you place it as close to, as you can. So on this one over here, I've placed it on the wait. I've placed it on the top here, so this is a good area to put that to. Uh, so you can put it on the ground. I don't care. I just place mine, let's put it up here for now. So, beacon sensor is down, and now we're going to need a screen. Now, I highly recommend using it, it's much easier to figure out actually how to, uh, how far or how close you need this thing to be, so we'll place down a screen, and I've called my distance. Now, by the way, this will not work with a text screen, it needs to be a screen, and I've called it distance. Now what we need is we need to get a target finder, which is here and place it down. Now, if you're making this, you want to make it so it targets players. You want to untick the do not target owner thing. I have that ticked normally, but in this situation, you want that unticked. Now what you want is you want to go under gates, and you want to go comparison, and you want to get a less than gate, and place it down. And these are the only components you need. Now, uh, actually, no, sorry, I lied. You need a constant value, but we will get to actually program that in a sec. Now as you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five components, and this one's got four. That's because I had to have a greater than gate, but in this case, it's going to be toggleable, so we'll be good. I'll show you what I mean by that. So, what you need to do is you need to go under wire, and we're going to wire the uh, target from the beacon sensor to one, or to the target finder. Now you want to get the less than gate and set it if the distance is less than what's on the constant value, we're going to give an output. Now, uh, you don't want to actually do that step now, or you can, but we're going to change this value in a sec. What you want to do to know how close you want to get is you want to wire up the distance, or sorry, the screen, to the distance. And as you can see, we get a number. So, on this one here, I made it so when I get about this close, which is about uh, 110, so if it's, or actually it's, uh, it's 20, here we go. So if I'm above 130, it'll close, but if I'm below 120, which is there, it'll open. So on this one here, we're going to make it so when we get about, let's say, this close, because this is going to be instant instead of opening. So this is about 110, we'll call it. So we're going to go under our constant value, and we're going to set it to 110. Oopsie, not 10, we want 110. Here we go. And we're going to update that. And now we should wire it up so it, if A, which is the distance on this, is less than 110, give an output. Now, the way we're going to make this door actually work is we're going to use... Now, I wouldn't call this cheating, but we're going to use the fading door tool. So we're going to click this, and I see this is green. Now we're going to wire up the fading door tool, which is wire. 
and we're going to wire the fade to the output. And that's really all there is to it. So when you get below 110, it activates. And it's same on both sides, so it'll close and we can go through it. And there's no problem. If you find yourself bumping into it, just extend the distance. So we can go in and out like that. And the reason we had a greater than gate in here is because normally with this one, it's a bit stubborn and it will accept an open and a close as separate things. So as soon as it gets an open input, it will open and that's it. It won't close automatically. There is an auto close, but that's very buggy. Or it doesn't close at the right time, so we had to have a greater than and less than gate. But normally, you just want a less than gate, and you can walk through it like this. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Uh, there's going to be something big, there's something big I'm working on. It's going to be down in this little area here. And it's going to be very, very complex, at least the way I've made it, but it's very, very useful, very good for... I'll give you a little hint, it's very useful for sequencing events. Now, uh, this has been Josh Lot, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.